Hey, what's up? I'm Austin Griffith. Eat Denver was rad. I just want to run through it, kind of uh, decompress after all the, the things are done. It was a sweet build-a-thon. Lots of cool things were made. I was basically pacing the food trucks, making sure everybody got fed and the burner wallet worked correctly. So uh, the TLDR is basically we had uh, 4,405 meals paid for with a burner wallet at the 11 food trucks. There's an example uh, transaction here. We could go look at it. You can see that the transaction fee is this little tiny number right here, which is just crazy. And this is the hex for the word meal. Like you, you would send it to the meal. You would send it with the data meal. So at that price for 4,000 meals, it comes out to about 20 cents in transaction fees was, was paid on the XDI network for all 4,000 meals, which is pretty incredible. Uh, pretty incredible uh, if you compare that to the almost $40,000 that was paid out to the food trucks as we off-ramp them to their wire account. Very awesome stuff. But those numbers aren't the key thing. The key thing is user adoption. The The numbers for user adoption are just through the roof with, uh, with the way we had the burner wallet set up because it was so easy to get to work. So basically, here's the user flow. You show up at the Sport Castle, the Denver Sport Castle at ETH Denver, and you get a solid coin. On that solid coin is a private key. There's probably still money on this private key, but it's just fake tokens that we minted, so you can't really do a lot with them. But you get your coin, you take your coin, and I think there's this cool tweet right here that showed it pretty well. You basically point your phone camera at your coin if you have an iPhone, and uh, it just loads up a wallet with money in it that looks like this guy right here. So that's basically the onboarding process. That's how you onboard onto the burner wallet. You point your camera at a QR code and the wallet shows up with money in it. That uh, that was pretty smooth, and I think that uh, a, a lot of the, the participants really enjoyed uh, you know, clicking through to that as long as they got instructions. I think if we could do better next year, we'll do a better job explaining to people that this is a private key, don't share it with anybody, and just shoot it with your camera phone and it'll work. If you have an Android phone, I think you might have to use a QR reader or um, sometimes Chrome or some of those browsers will just have a reader, or you could just navigate to buffadie.io and then use this little scanner button Ooh. Mm, 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 mm. and then scan your coin in and it would seed uh, the wallet. Okay, cool. So now, well, what happened over here to me? Oh, whatever. Okay, so kicking through this article, uh, this is another really cool video. So then once you had your wallet and you were ready to go, you were walking up to the food truck. Um, each food truck basically had their own QR code that you could shoot. I love how he uses the scanner to like look down the line of food trucks. This is my buddy Mark. And then you can see he points it at the QR code reader and it brings it up. And I can just show you just an example of that. So what that is is a request. So anybody with, with the burner wallet, and this is buffadie.io, but if you go to xdie.io, it's the same thing. Buffadie runs on a token, xdie runs on native xdie. But if you say request the amount of 0.1 for a hot dog, and then you build that request in, so then we printed this out for all the food trucks. But then someone with their Buffadie wallet could just walk up and hit the scan button, and they could scan that code. Boop. And then it loads. Basically, it sets up a little form that says, do you want to pay 0.1 for a hot dog? And I'm going to say, yes, I do want to pay 0.1 for a hot dog. So then the food trucks would just watch this right here. So you can see there's a nice little receipt here. And the food truck sees right there. Food truck just kind of visually lines that up and hands them a hot dog. So that was basically the experience from the point of view of the participant and they got their food. So you could also just like send funds back and forth, right? It's still just a wallet sending tokens around. So if this dude just hits receive and I hit send, 
I can actually let's go the other way around, right? Let's have me receive and this dude send. So you can click this button or you can just click the scanner button, either way. Boop. And then let's just send me like point uh let's send me ten cents. You can put in a message or not. You hit send. Then five seconds later we'll see like some history show up there. Yep, perfect. So that's basically the burner wallet at ETH Denver in terms of the participants perspective. So what else could you do? Oh yeah, oh yeah, so we had collectibles too. So check out this sweet bufficorn. Whoa, cool bufficorn collectible. We were trying to hand those out, but we were so busy. Next burner event, look for us. Uh, if you're a sponsor, we're going to have it set up so you can have a bunch of these like on a, on a laptop or a device. We're working on these little guys right here where you just have like this little compute stick that has a camera hooked up to it where someone just like shows their public uh, QR code and it just drops one of these collectibles on them. Pretty excited about that. That's kind of coming, coming soon to Burner Wallet. And so, so that's the view from the participant. What was it like for a food truck? So the food truck showed up Friday morning and we had asked them to make sure they had a wire account set up already. If you're not uh, familiar with SendWire, I, th I think it's SendWire.com. It's, uh, it's good for on and off ramps and sending, uh, sending money. But we had them basically attach their bank account to their wire address. So basically that gives us an Ethereum address to off ramp them to. So then uh, each food truck already had their own iPad. So we just pointed their iPad at a special coin of theirs that was for a vendor. So the vendor basically on ramps the same way as a user does. They shoot the QR code and they get a wallet. And uh, vendors are actually marked in a smart contract as a vendor. It allows them to off ramp and some other some other things like they can put in their products. But we didn't do that at ETH Denver. We did that at some of our other events. But then, um, yep, we've already seen this. This is what the participant sees. I just showed that. Uh, yeah, the vendor would have this QR code at their truck, and then participants would walk up and scan it. Just just as we've talked about, it was it was really interesting to see um, after the food trucks had done a couple transactions, they knew exactly how the flow worked. And so even though it's pretty intuitive, there's still like every once in a while you kind of have to hint along the way to people like, oh, you know, hit send, hit, hit the little send button, point it at the QR code, now you get now you get a food. So it was really fun to see the food truck operators sort of coaching the crypto initiated uh, on how to use their wallet. It was It was a lot of fun. So then, yeah, at the end of the night, the vendors had a, basically a cash out button and you can see, uh, so cashing out basically meant you would send your tokens to 0xFs and it's an account that no one owns, but it signals to us like we have this, we had a, we had a kind of a wet oracle in the middle, a human. We, uh, the, the ETH Denver organizers wanted to be safe with it, so we had a human in the middle, so your tokens would burn and that would signal to a human to uh, initiate a wire transfer. So that could easily be automated, and there is an exchange here where you can go buff all the way to your ETH address, to ETH, and then ship it out to your ETH address if you want, but we wanted the experience to be really, really easy for the food truck, so we, we set up an oracle in the middle. Um, there, there were some rumors of, of hacks, but they ended up mostly being just misunderstandings or front end changes, but I've got a link to the article there. I kind of talk a little bit more and go into depth about it. One thing was we, we were dropping gas to people. So, so we had these events called cypherpunk speakeasies, like leading, leading up to eat Denver, we did, uh, a, an event every six, an event every week for six weeks. I think I kind of talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Weeks weeks of user testing, right? So what we did was we uh, same thing same thing with the with the solid coin. You basically get a paper wallet, and inside of that paper wallet is a private key. And there's a little bit more explanation on here. So that that I think we want to do next time. But basically, at these events, one one per week for six weeks, we got every we got like thirty people together, right? And we bought them beer by putting enough tokens on this for them to go to the bar and, and buy beer. 
so what we noticed uh, in during that user testing, we fixed tons of little little bugs here and there. But what we noticed is every once in a while, someone would send their tokens to a different account to get away from this this private key that was here, just to be a little bit more secure. So by doing that, they moved their tokens, but they didn't have any gas. So we built the little gas dropper to say, okay, this person just moved tokens over here. This account has tokens, but no gas. They're, they're basically going to be frozen there. Let's, let's sneaky drop uh, a couple pennies of gas. And of course, someone eventually exploited that and just created a bunch of accounts and drained all $5 of mine. Okay, jeez. So... Other neat projects at ETH Denver. Enough about the burner wallet. Uh, the Moloch is really interesting to me. A very thin layer of governance is going to be applied to a lot of different projects in the space, and I'm really excited to see how the Moloch works. Uh, the, the too long didn't read is basically there's there's a there's a bank and people can can basically put themselves they they can they can offer up to be in the group by either putting in money or a good idea. And then the group votes whether or not they're allowed in. And if they're allowed in, they're given voting shares and their money goes into the bank. So so I could either be part of Moloch by putting in a bunch of tokens or I could or I could ask for 100 voting shares by saying I have this cool idea. I want to make the burner wallet run on the lightning network. We were just joking about that. But and, and then everyone could vote and say that's a good idea or that's a bad idea. And if they said it's a good idea, then I would have voting shares. And then I could immediately liquidate those voting shares and get some funds to go do something or, or vote uh, on, on each thing, each voting period. Very cool stuff. I look, look, look to uh, the Moloch for more on that. Uh, Gitcoin announced uh, the winners of their CLR experiment, which is really cool. So it's like cost-constrained liberal radicalism. So the... The, the TLDR is basically, if we have civil resistance, we can have people say, I want to put in a dollar, or I want to put in five dollars. And then if we have some funds that are set up to fund these certain things, we can use this method of CLR to decide how to distribute those funds or how to match those funds. So, so if I put in five dollars in this project, but I put in ten dollars in this project, you can use my my low cash as signaling for a, a bigger amount of cash, right? Like you can you let the community vote, and the way the community votes, you can then match. And Alex Van de Zant put this really cool graphic up here. Look at this thing right here. So basically, like this dude puts in money, and then this dude puts in. So they're each putting in the amount that their head is in terms of area. But as you can see, if this dude puts in this, then the matching matches that much, right? And then she puts in that, so then it's matched by this much, right? So, so the 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 sum of the square of the roots is here. This is the square root of the donation. But then, if you look at this whole area, it's the sum of the square root squared. Whoo! But that that graphic explains it the best that I can possibly say, right? So she put in just this much, but then this much was matched. See how that like grows? That's that's the important part. Okay, cool. So, uh, Gitcoin put out an article. There's some links here. Check them out. Uh, if you didn't see the sweet Plinko board, it was there. And koozies and socks. Owaki is the Sultan of Shill. Uh, my talk at ETH Denver was really fun. We did decentralized uh, meta transaction relays. So, inside the burner wallet, and I think it's broken right now. It's like the, my next task today is to go fix this. But I think links are broken in uh, the burner wallet. But normally you can send a link. So you go to your burner and you say, I want to send a link, and you put in 25 cents and it just makes you a little QR code and a link, and you can send that to someone else. And then someone else somewhere else can claim that link. Well, if that person doesn't have any funds, basically they're going to try to claim it and they're not going to have any gas to, to claim it from the contract. So we have a relay. And I used to have a centralized relay that would just catch that and pay the gas and submit it for them. But Yoav Weiss with Tabuki came along and they have this gas station network where it's a decentralized uh, meta transaction relayer system. So it's like a contract where they register and they're staking and slashing and all of that to keep to, to keep everybody honest. But basically I can just pick one out of out of the list and inside of there it has like an HTTP request. So I send my meta transaction to that HTTP endpoint and it either immediately responds or it doesn't and I can pick another one or another one out of the list, right? So I can very quickly find a relayer. The relayer takes my meta transaction, uh, signs it 
as an actual Ethereum transaction and then sends it back to me and also puts it on the network. So I get immediate gratification that my transaction just went through and, and they paid for it. And, and it's, it's a really neat talk. Uh, Yoav does a really good job. Check that out. Uh, there were a bunch of projects that built on the burner wallet, including ZDAI, which is, uh, you know, like ZK transfers within a burner wallet, which is super cool. Um, I'm excited to see the roadmap and see what it's going to take to get those guys, uh, um, you know, a PR into the burner and actually get this in, into production. It, you know, you know how that works with with hackathon projects, right? Like it's kind of the weekend. The weekend is a hack, and you put everything together just just to get a little bit, and then it takes a month to really build the like to to finish the thing, right? But uh, my favorite project was, and I'm gonna I'm gonna write a whole article about the burner wallet art or uh, burner wallet builds. There was lots of different projects that built on the burner wallet, which is super cool. But my favorite project was from Billy Renekamp, and he built Eat Dev Tools, which is like it's one of those ideas where when you're on the other side of it, when you're on the it, it's already happened. It's like of course we built this, of course. But then, uh, you know, before ETH Denver, we didn't have this thing, and it's it's something that we need. It's basically you you it gives you a lot of um, insight into what's going on with your DAP as you're building it logs and transactions and ABI Explorer and GraphQL, all sorts of really cool stuff. Uh, there's a link here if you want to just pay attention to updates and stuff from, from Billy. Uh, that, that's what the, my first question for him was like, when, you know, like, how do I, how do I know when you guys are ready for me to start messing with this thing? Cause obviously at the end of a hackathon it works, but it's probably not like solid. And so there's, there's a little sign up form so you can know when it's solid. Uh, the Apprentio student competition was really cool. So there were, uh, I think, students from Denver that had put together two different hackathon projects that uh, were were really interesting, and I got to uh, judge that. And also the Griff Riff, we three Griffs got to get together in person for the first time, and we talked about so many things. I'm not going to cover it all, uh, but the it's, it's a pretty cool riff it's kind of it was sunday evening kind of after almost everything was done so it was nice to just decompress and kind of riff with those those dudes really really cool dudes uh conclusion eat denver was absolutely fantastic if if you're thinking about having a, a conference or a meetup and you want to use something like the burner wallet where we have solid coins or paper wallets and then a, a burner wallet on a phone or uh, your custom you, we can have a custom token we can white label the thing if you are interested in any of that hit me up uh twitter telegram i'm at austin griffith we'll probably have a form here i feel like i we should just have a form and i'll stick it in this so by the time you're watching this there's probably going to be a form here that you could click and just say hey i want to do this tons of thanks to everybody richard maker dow brian ethier he's he's been my kind of partner on all this stuff don't forget burner burner intern eduardo he built uh, a lot of those little those little functions like the gas dropper and he's working on on the collectible dropper huge thank to thanks to maker dow and poa Th those two uh were really the powerhouses here and getting everything done uh they 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 helped me out all along the way and obviously igor's xdi network it, None of this would be possible without the XDI network. Sky helped us uh, uh, fix a bunch of bugs and just kind of, he, he was just a good user of the system. Uh, all, all, everybody that shows up at, showed up at the Cypherpunk speakeasies. Those are great. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for helping out. Thank you for giving me good user testing. Consensus and Gitcoin for letting me go down the rabbit hole and build this thing out. And obviously the ETH Denver uh, organizers, uh, Corey, John, Justin, Will, you guys, uh, you guys killed it. Uh, we'll see you next year. It's going to be uh, another awesome year. I look forward to it. Uh, happy Bowtie Friday. Thanks for checking out the Burner Wallet at ETH Denver. It was a, an awesome success. Thank you for being there. See you.